Hey there, Robonzo here. This is another installment of the Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, How to Get Booked and Paid What You're Worth Over and Over Again. This is Chapter 7, which focuses on sales and marketing. Yes, this is my book, which I published just a little over three years ago. It's available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback, and also at other fine ebook retailers. And by the way, purchasing a copy is one of the ways that you can support the podcast and the Unstarving Musician Project, helping musicians do more of what they love by making their professional and or vocational journeys easier. A couple of things before we get rolling. I've been thinking a good deal about um, what I and guests of this podcast preach and thinking that it's a lot of the obvious. The Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs is a book about relationships and the obvious. But a good question to ask ourselves from time to time is, are we doing the obvious? In this case, the obvious is stuff we know needs to be done, or at least we know it needs to be tried. So are we doing it? Are you doing it? As you listen to the obvious of this chapter, look at it as a reminder, uh, as reinforcement, as repetition, all cornerstones of learning, along with the execution part, of course. A lot of my guests have this stuff down, and maybe you do too. If you don't, let this episode be a call to action. And if you need help, I'm here for you. I'm happy to hop on the phone for 15 minutes to discuss your challenges anytime. It's free. So just go to unstarvingmusician.com to email me requesting a phone appointment if you would like one, or unstarvingmusician.com forward slash coaching to just schedule one right there online. Re-listening to this audio chapter, which was recorded for a now-retired podcast version of the book, I think uh, it's a great topic, or I was reminded of what would be a great topic for a revised edition of this book, possibly another book, and that is community building. This is something that every indie artist, every weekend warrior, every cover band needs to be doing, community building. Okay, let's get to chapter seven. You're going to hear it exactly as it was originally recorded in podcast format. The intro music you'll hear is me and my bandmates from decades ago in a little band we called Pew 38 or PU 38. The song is Veg and it was recorded at Dallas Sound Labs, a place that was a pretty big time studio in its day. They worked with a lot of big names, Pantera, Marilyn Manson, Steve Perry, and many others that I can't even remember. We were there because our guitarist, Frank Salazar, was an esteemed engineer for Dallas Sound Labs. Anyway, it was recorded in a few hours, as I recall. I wish we'd have written and recorded more of what we were doing back in those days. And uh, we'll just let that song suffice for the intro of this entire episode. So uh, none of the usual intro music. We're going to hear the intro as it was recorded for this episode of the Unstarving Musicians Guide Book Podcast, or whatever I called it when it was up. Okay, I digress a little bit, but here is chapter seven of the Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs. (sighs) Welcome to the Unstarving Musician's Guide podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Roberto Hernandez, aka Robonzo. This 12-episode podcast is based on my book, The Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, How to Get Booked and Paid What You're Worth Over and Over Again, currently available on Amazon. Please enjoy this audio rendition, and thanks for listening. Sales and Marketing But I just want to play. Deep down, you may feel that the only thing that really matters to you is playing, and that all the things that come along with it aren't as important as your actual art in playing. You wouldn't be alone in thinking this way. More than most things in this world, I'd much rather practice my instrument, work on my vocal skills, and perform. Okay, I'll admit that I enjoy the marketing part a little bit, but it can be time-consuming. And I don't always feel all that creative. Creativity really helps when it comes to marketing, but the good news is that creativity isn't a requirement. Then there's the sales aspect. Does anyone really like selling? Not really. Not even sales professionals. True sales professionals know how to transform selling into helping others by providing value. The truth of it is, in today's world, we all have to provide value, and this fact is a huge topic for a totally separate book. And providing true value to others is the best way to brand oneself. 
In our case, it's the way that we brand ourselves as musicians and or as a band that is important. So I'll state the obvious and say that sales and marketing is a necessary part of getting gigs. Let's continue the discussion with marketing. Be social. You're likely hearing about it constantly unless you just crawled from under a rock. It being social media. Maybe you're even convinced that social media is worth looking into. You'd be right. If for some reason you can't talk yourself into joining Facebook, my recommendation is to join a band that has at least a couple of members who are on Facebook. Perhaps a band that's on several other social networks, such as Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, Google+, or some other social network du jour. If you're not leveraging social media, you're missing a good deal of your potential audience. This is not to say that if you're really good at email marketing, you're going to be unsuccessful by not including Facebook, but if email marketing is all you're doing, you'd better be damn good at it. That said, you're going to have to trust me on this one. Facebook, as of this writing, is a killer channel to include in your music marketing efforts. The three most important and basic functions of your Facebook marketing include creating a Facebook page for your band. This is different from your personal Facebook profile. Inviting everyone you know to like your band's Facebook page. Using the events feature to promote your gigs. I'm not making any claims as a social media expert, but I can tell you that this is what works for me and others. You can dig deeper and learn from real experts by searching Google for social media meetups, podcasts, blogs, etc. Many of these mediums feature information specifically for Facebook marketers. Pro tip. Post an upcoming gig announcement two to three weeks before the gig and create and share an event the week of your gig. As more people like your page, this will really help you promote gigs. Back to what works for me. If your band doesn't yet have a Facebook page, create one right away. Facebook is constantly changing, as are the other social media platforms, so I'm not going to offer specific instructions here. But if you want some help, don't hesitate to contact me. Roberto at Robonzo.com. For now, I'm going to recommend that you simply search Google and or YouTube for how to create a Facebook page. Facebook also has tutorials within their help pages. If your band doesn't have a website, you can get by with a Facebook page alone, although I recommend having both. Tutorials for building a Facebook page will recommend adding photo and video content. Do it. If you have access to a professional photographer, awesome. If not, use your smartphone to start creating photo and video content for your Facebook page. Anyone who books you is going to want to see what you look like and hear what you sound like. At a minimum, post gig announcements the week of your upcoming gigs. Using the event feature of your Facebook page enables you to most effectively get the word out about your gig. The real power of Facebook events is the ability for others to share your event with their Facebook friends. By tying events to your band's Facebook page, you'll reinforce your brand. To supercharge your Facebook efforts, ask your bandmates to do three things. Like your band page. Ask everyone they know to like your band page. Share your band page events. This gives you the advantage of the multiplier effect, or the power of many. You want your bandmates helping you with as much of the marketing effort as possible. I've spoken with musicians who do it all alone, i.e. with no help from bandmates, and I can tell you that they struggle. My challenges are far fewer because I align myself with musicians who are active in the marketing efforts of every performance in which I'm involved. The three activities mentioned above are among the easiest things your bandmates can do to contribute to your marketing effort, so don't feel like you're asking them for too much. Creating your own artist Facebook page separate from your band's pages would undoubtedly be beneficial to your overall efforts as well. Confession. As of the writing of this book, I do not have an artist Facebook page. Not yet, anyway. I'm currently managing or co-managing Facebook pages for three bands. Whatever you do with regard to social media, always think about what's sustainable. By this, I mean how much can you reasonably maintain. This might be one Facebook page, or it might be three Facebook pages for three of your bands, plus one artist Facebook page for your personal brand. Once you have enough ideas down, you can reuse them, occasionally adding new topic ideas. This approach will help you when you're feeling a little less creative. Amazingly, it doesn't take an incredible amount of time on a weekly basis to build and maintain a Facebook page following. It does, however, take a sustained and consistent effort. 
You may make it happen in weeks, but prepare yourself for the likelihood that it will take months to build a good Facebook following. And remember, quality over quantity. Always go for quality followers, i.e. likes. This means people who are actually interested in you and your band. Here's how you can build a quality following. Ask friends and family to like your page. Solicit your audiences for likes. Ask venues at which you perform to like your page. In my opinion, and with my uncensored marketing hat on, likes and followers don't mean shit if there's no legitimate connection or relationship. Build a community from within your tribe. Tap into your fan base, friends, and family. These are the people that care about what you're doing. Follow this one simple rule of thumb, quality over quantity, and you'll build a strong following. Another great way to gain followers and an important activity to engage in is to solicit attendees of your live shows for likes and follows. It can be as simple as an on-mic announcement like, Hey everyone, thank you for coming to our show. You can find out where we perform next by following us on Facebook at your Facebook page name. In this case, people will assume that a search on Facebook will lead them to your page. Otherwise, spell it out for them i.e. facebook.com forward slash your band name. Use the same technique for Twitter, Instagram, or any other social networks that your band can be found on. While writing this, I just thought of a contest I want to try at my next gig, which is like us on Facebook for a chance to win a free copy of our latest CD, a $10 value. You can also do things like include your social URLs on business cards, posters, flyers, postcards, or any other print collateral. There's plenty on social media marketing to warrant yet another book. It's a big topic, but let's move on to other forms of marketing for now. A somewhat lost art of band and artist marketing at the local level is print collateral, particularly posters and flyers. If it's bigger than 8.5 by 11, I call it a poster. One of my good friends makes the best flyers but seldom prints them out. He usually circulates them via email. If you do this, use an email marketing service like MailChimp, MailChimp MailChimp.com. If you go to the trouble of making nice flyers or posters, printing just one or two copies and leaving them at a venue a week or two before your gig scores huge points with most venues. Venues love it when bands promote their gigs. Professional graphics and or photos will help make your posters look great, but they're not absolutely necessary. Use the best camera you can get your hands on or purchase some inexpensive clip art or even better, get creative. Maybe you've got mad graphic design skills. The main thing is to put something together that says who, when, and where and then distribute. Remember to send or hand deliver and hang copies at the venues at which you and your band perform. Let's talk now about email marketing. The most important point I want to make is that you should use an email marketing service. I mentioned MailChimp because they have a robust service and a freemium model, which means you can use it for free depending on how many contacts you have. Or if you want, you can pay for some extra bells and whistles. Use of a service like MailChimp will do a couple of important things. One, ensure your recipients get your emails. And two, keep you out of trouble where anti-spam laws are concerned. The other point I'd like to stress is that you can and should create a template that can be reused every time you send out an email. I usually send an email the week of my gigs. I pretty much send the same content, making changes only where necessary. I purposefully don't want to get overly creative with every email because doing so costs time. And sustainable marketing has much to do with time management. This minimal creativity approach works well when you're mainly promoting gigs. I'm not saying that I never get a little creative. My point here is that since you're basically communicating the same type of message with each email, being super creative isn't going to get you much. Being minimally creative when it comes to creating gig emails will help you sustain your email marketing efforts. Put another way, simple will help you be consistent with your email marketing efforts. If it takes me an hour to set up every email I send, I'll likely be less inclined to send one for every gig. If it takes me 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to be much more consistent about emailing my list. This is not to say that you shouldn't be creative with your email subject lines. You should. Or that you can't be somewhat creative with your messaging. The bigger point here is to keep it simple and sustainable. Speaking of lists, you should be working to build a quality email list for your band or bands and or yourself. 
By quality, I'm referring to contacts that actually care about where you're performing. Don't be afraid to ask people if they'd like to receive an occasional email telling them where you're performing next. Do this between gigs and at gigs. Be patient and stay focused on quality. Eventually, you'll get to 100, 500, or even 1,000 plus email subscribers. It all depends on your effort and how much focus you want to put on your email marketing. Email, by the way, still works. Everyone has an email account. Well, almost everyone. Selling for a first-time booking. Where selling is concerned, give some thought to what you'll say when you're asking for a booking. This might include mention of the venues where you've performed, music styles your band plays, your typical gig marketing efforts, or some other selling points. At this point, you've done things like solicited a venue by email, or maybe you've even done some in-person schmoozing. This is the point at which you're going to ask for the booking. In my experience, a venue is pretty warmed up to the idea of booking one of my bands by the time I'm ready to get to a specific commitment. They're warmed up to the idea because I've spoken with them about my band. I've sent follow-up emails, which include our website, Facebook page, a brief recap of who we are and what we play, and a brief recap of our typical marketing campaign. If I'm lucky, I get an email response asking for availability. I've already determined what the pay and logistics are, so I'm in coordination and logistics mode by the time I'm ready to ask for the booking. Oftentimes, I have to follow up with a phone call to get a specific date and booking commitment. This can take some persistence on your part, so just keep following up until they say yes or no. Once you have a commitment, confirm all details in writing. In my market, most venues are cool with an email exchange to confirm all the details. However, some may provide you with a separate written agreement. I find it important to get things in writing so that there's no confusion or misunderstanding. There's no reason why you should not get paid what was originally agreed upon, nor should there be any confusion about scheduling if you have it in writing. In the event that there is any confusion or misunderstanding, you'll be glad that you have an agreement in writing. And lastly... Remember to state your price and then don't say another word. Let's recap this chapter with some important points. Sales and marketing is a necessary part of getting gigs. Social media marketing is a big part of the marketing mix. Think sustainable. Print collateral can score big points with venues. Email marketing still works. Selling first-time bookings warrants thoughtful planning. Get your bookings in writing to avoid misunderstandings. Now, go out and market and sell yourself. Thank you for listening to the Unstarving Musician's Guide podcast. Find out more about me, the Unstarving Musician Project, and the Unstarving Musician's podcast at unstarvingmusician.com. Ciao for now. All right, I hope you enjoyed that reading of Chapter 7 of the Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, read, of course, by yours truly. Before I let you go, would you like to pick up a few tips, insights, expertise from some of the guests and many other musicians I've spoken to, hundreds if not thousands at this point, um, about the Unstarving Musician Project, about getting gigs, about building community, about house concerts, and various other things related to being an independent music artist, join the Unstarving Musician community. You can do so by going to unstarvingmusician.com and just signing up right there. You'll get an occasional email from me, weekly if I'm good, but maybe not even that frequent, but you don't mind that. (laughs) You'll also hear about the latest podcast episodes. I'll leave you with some weekly insights, maybe with links to some interesting stuff that I found that I think you'll enjoy. And uh, maybe on occasion a sneak preview of something I'm working on. Sometimes I ask you guys for questions uh, or (laughs) ask you questions that I think will help me make the podcast or my next book better. So yeah, join the Unstarving Musician community. Be part of a movement and hopefully get something from it. It's free. All right. And lastly, you guys have heard me talk about Dan Zugel before. They are... um, One of the ways that I uh, power this podcast, if you will, I'm an affiliate partner with them. And I'm also a user of Banzoogle. 
Although, I had planned to have my artist website up long before this episode was being recorded and had committed as much in uh, several prior episodes. I've been a little uh, buried, but I took a first major step and separated um, Robonzo.com from UnstarvingMusician.com, which may mean absolutely nothing to you. And it wasn't a huge deal, but um, now I'm kind of on, I have a fire under my ass to get this done (laughs) because I created some problems. I mean, it was a good thing I separated them, but I also created a problem I need to resolve, so um, I'm motivated to get my artist website up. Anyway, I have checked out Banzoogle.com. I've been talking about it for a while. And uh, they power websites for musicians all over the place. Um, It's built for musicians, by musicians. They've got a musician-friendly support team. They do a lot of cool stuff. Um, they has a, have an easy-to-use system that will get you online fast, tons of mobile-friendly templates, and basically help you customize your site and content. They do also some interesting stuff to help you sell merch online to make that a little easier, to grow your email list, which is hugely important to your endeavors, integrate all your socials, and they offer support, like I said, from a musician-friendly team seven days a week. So the best part is you can uh, take advantage of a special offer using a promo code that I'm about about to give you. <laughs> Just go to bandzoogle.com to start a free 30-day trial and use the promo code Robonzo to get 15% off your first year. So uh, bandzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O. All right, and thank you for supporting the podcast. I will be talking at you again soon. And I hope you'll be here listening. Ciao for now.